know, the Commission on Higher Education is the state's coordinating board for all of higher education. So he is very knowledgeable, and we welcome him to the podium to guide us through um, consideration of options before us. Dr. Fitch. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the board. I appreciate the opportunity to represent you this because we get to this and start looking at the meat of it. I have a presentation that I modified a bit because of the interest of the audience and the people who serve in the PAC program. I wanted to ensure that not only did we hear the audit report, the actuarial report, and the OBU investment report, but we also, over the past two weeks, have had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages that have been provided by the PAC constituent group. These are people out there who have these PAC agreements that have indicated to the board that we have these questions and we have this interest. So the treasurer asked me to try to consolidate that information to let you know that you have been heard and heard by the board. Your information has been gathered through the website that was established, the email address, telephone, letters, and contacts. And it couldn't be done and consolidated and provided this board to help us with these options and projections in the future if it were not for the people in the treasurer's office, the PAC program, and again, Margaret Duncan from my office, to assist me in working not only with you as individuals, but the media. If you look at the straight lines on there, the dark blue line and the yellow line are fixed lines there, you'll see those are the projections necessary applied by the actuary and also account investments as they try to project what we're going to do, and that's that top yellow line. The next, or excuse me, the blue line, the yellow line, as we look at it, are the tuition and fees as we have projected them at 7.25 over this period of time. The other ones there are the three elements that directly impact from the previous slide what goes on with those benchmarks as we set those as a board based on the information received from the professionals and experts in the area. The bottom one, I'll start with that, and that's the one that's a bit separated. That's the number of students that are coming of age and have applied to school and are attending school. These are based on long term, but I only use the three or four year period to make these projections. On that basis, you can see there's a slight downturn in 2008, but then it starts significantly going up in the fall of 2008, 2009, and ongoing. We have more and more of our students, as pointed out by Mr. Compton, the idea that people are coming of age and start attending school. Plus, with the downturn in the economy, workforce, and the opportunities for job, it's traditional that in education you'll see more and more people enrolling in college and attempting to go to colleges because of the job loss. The next item is the green line. You take a look at that, and that's fluctuating. Earlier it was stated that the community colleges held their fee line in that, as well as some of our four-year colleges. And that creates that line, as you can see, between 26, 207, and so forth. It has been held down by those numbers because they've been very gracious in trying to address those needs and increase the cost of college. Unfortunately, what has happened, because of the downturn in the economy, reductions in the higher education last year as they entered this year, and a 9% proration, the projections for tuition in many cases will go up. And we're going to see that, obviously, and as pointed out, the majority of our students in PAC programs select the University of Alabama and Auburn University to attend. With that idea in mind, the cost of education and covering that tuition as it increases will increase the burden placed on the 7.25 benchmark projection and also on the return volume that we need to cover that. So those institutions right now, the community colleges, Troy University and Alabama State University, have already responded publicly and indicated they will try to hold the line for that. And I believe that was a question from a board member. What's easier to handle, the equity market or tuition? In this particular case, these institutions and community college stepped forward and said, we're going to do our best to help. Part of what we did as a board, just so you know, when this first came out, we had opportunities to visit with all of the presidents of the colleges. And they've all been responsive in one way or another. They've assisted us with things, the financial officers and projections. But as you know, they are also faced with the same downturn in the economy and the other items I've already mentioned, including probation. As you go through that with our projections, we project that we're going to see an increase in enrollment. And this year already, we're at 3.5% increase, which again, our PAC members coming in and other students coming in that will put a demand on the institutions. The critical line here is the anomaly that you talked about and you've heard about. That's the red line. You can see that in 2007, it reached a peak. And then at the end of 2007, it started to drop dramatically. It wasn't even a matter of normally waiting to see on long-term applications that you could wait a quarter or 
a half a year or even a full year in this application because it's so quickly dropped. And again, most importantly, through September through December of last year, it was a critical element. And you can see where that line has dropped all the way down. Now, the projection on there is simply my projection based on the tuition and increases that I project on this because of the short-term funding that we're looking at, the changes in the market, even though we've had a good couple weeks in the day. I still think there's going to be some issues where we're going to have to look at that as a challenge and try to deal with it and come up with some solutions. And that's the whole purpose behind essentially my presentation, what we've heard from you, what the board members have suggested, and importantly, the staff who works with this on an ongoing basis. Because remember, we have a number of years of very successful responses in the handling of this. Thousands of children have gone to school and over $400 million have paid out support and education. The full intent of this board and the staff is to try to continue to follow that path, and that's what we're trying to do in the purpose of the meeting today.